Hey, Chris Wheatley here from Hot Tub University, and today we have got a brand new 2018 Marquis Vector 21 Hot Tub. Now, Marquis's been a funny one here because, guys, I've been kind of standing behind Marquis a fair bit, and they're one of the only guys that have pretty much dissed me. So what I mean by that, every other brand I like or endorse, um, I endorse because I like how they build tubs. And, and once I started doing that, they were happy to open up their facilities and to fly me in and to have me see everything they're doing and to give me full visibility so I could talk to you, the customer, and, and with, with reality. And I could say, hey, this is really what's happening in the real world. Um, man, these people are really doing this thing. And I could verify because I've been there. And Marquis is one of these guys that never did that. And in fact, they hardly returned my calls. And even when we pretended we were customers trying to get advice, they would just shuff us back off to the dealer and they really wouldn't be able to help us, um, you know, uh, directly. So I've always had this little uh, niggly bit with these guys. So I went and bought myself a brand new 2018 uh, Marquis Vector 21 so I could tear the damn thing apart, make sure these guys are doing what I'm say they say I'm doing because I don't want to be telling you guys the wrong information. So here it goes. Brand new 2018 Marquis Vector 21 hot tub. We've ripped all the sides off it. We filled it with water. I sat my ass in there this morning and tried it out to see how it was performing. Um, so we're going to have a quick look at this thing. We'll see what these guys are doing and uh, let's see if they're going to stay on my good guy list or not. So, as you all know, there's only about four things I really require in this world to at least get into the past, you know, to at least get past the uh, tier two. Hand roll your shell, build a self-supporting hull, something that can take its own weight without props and supports. Glue and clamp your plumbing lines. Use a good full foam isinine insulation system. If you're in a northern climate, if you're in a southern climate, okay, we can let that one slide. Um, and parts, man. I don't want some arsehole that's going over to some, you know, some cheap manufactured part that only fits their hot tub so they can hold you to ransom for the rest of your life for the place, replacement part of that, you know, cost of that part. I want somebody that's using a good parts list. I want Balboa Electronic Control and Heating Systems. And you all know I'm a big fan of Balboa. And why, by the way, they've never paid me a penny to say that. Um, why I like Balboa is simple, man. These guys hold key patents that simply make it a better product. It's going to last longer for you. And easily sourced for replacement parts. So, let's have a look. 2018 Marquis Vector Hot Tub. Very spaceship looking. And we're going to talk about some of the crazy spaceship looks here in a minute. But first of all, let's get into the bones of this thing. So the first thing I noticed when I tore the front of this thing off, well, two things. I noticed there wasn't a lot of care and attention to, well, to the fabrication process. So, Although they're using a good foam here, this is the isinine foam that I always recommend. Uh, it's a good lightweight foam, it never hardens up. And, and yeah, right out of the case, it doesn't have as good of an R value as a really high density closed cell foam. But it allows you to put so much foam in there that you very quickly um, you know, make up for that. So, uh, whereas if we're using a closed cell foam, and we only put a couple inches in there, we're only going to get up to about R8. So I like the foam, but what I don't like is the carelessness with which it's been applied. And there's a couple examples. Look at that motor. All that foam is literally right up against that motor. Um, you look in this area here and it's literally up against the pump head and the motor. Man, that's, that's just not good. That's gonna cause a lot of issues with um, cooling. So that motor's gonna run hot, simple as that. So there really should be a shroud here. Uh, Parts-wise good. US Motors, I'm a big fan of them. Uh, Balboa Electronic Control and Heating Systems, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, you know, again, that only gets you halfway. And there's another problem I have with this tub, and it's not all marquee tubs, this tub in particular. So it's this goofy spaceship thing they've done. And it wouldn't be such a bad if it was just aesthetics, but it's not just aesthetics. So they put all these extra valves on so it looks like this, so they can go, oh my god, you know, who was that? And the marketing guys can have a field day, and the truth is it's made no difference. So when I ran this tub up and got in it, it just, it was okay. I mean, it was good. I mean, the performance on the big chair over there, uh, which has, you know, two high flow therapy jets and two of the mid flow therapy jets was actually pretty decent. But the rest of those jets are just regular jets. They look different, but they're not different. And guess what that means, guys? There's no real advantage to any of it, except to the manufacturer who now has you by the short curlies, because every time you need a part now, you're going back to them, I guarantee you those parts are gonna be the same price as, as the rest of the parts even though they're the same thing, because they got you cornered. You can't get those parts anywhere else. The bigger scare here is if that brand doesn't take off, this market, this uh, Vector 21 series doesn't take off, you might not even be able to get parts. Now you might notice the water level's a little low on here. And that was because 
And there's a couple things screwed up on this tub. The micro silk, which by the way, so micro silk is one of these great little marketing things. Oh, it's cute. it makes micro bubbles that clean your pores. Now I couldn't quite understand that. I'm not that smart. So I called smart people. I called a couple of the dermatologists. I called a couple of GPs and I said, hey, little bubbles in water, in hot water, um, cleaning your pores. And they all kind of went, uh, yeah, no real science there, big guy. Sounds cool, but no real science. Oh my God, wait, look, it started working. Oh, geez, it wouldn't work today, but look, we got micro bubbles, micro bubbles coming out. So all this thing is doing is it's a diffuser, and it's just breaking everything into these tiny little bubbles. But man, everybody in the medical community that I've talked to has simply said that there's really no science at all behind the idea of micro bubbles cleaning in your skin. So although it's kind of cool that it makes micro bubbles, I guess not really. It just kind of makes your water look cloudy. Um, dubious at best. I'd love to see some studies, but guys, so if you got some studies, send them to me. I love innovation, man. You come up with something innovative, I'm all over it, especially if it's good tech. But this is not innovation. This is BS marketing, man. All these different, they made everything different shapes and they called everything different names. So, you know, they're not called diverter valves anymore. They're called, I don't know, some fancy stupid name. Look on their website. And the air injectors aren't called air injectors. And they made all these jets with these different faces on them. <laughs> None of them made any difference. When I got in the tub, it felt just like a regular tub. All the extra diverter valves did nothing but make it confusing and, and, and more parts to fail. I don't get it. Hey there, Chris Wheatley here from Hot Tub University, and today we've got our Vector 21 up and running. And the reason we got it up and running is we sold it. And right out of the gate, we had a leak on it. Um, so we marked it last night with some tape just to see if it was going to lose water overnight. And again, it's not running. Um, it's just sitting here. So... What we had this morning was water coming out the side here, you can see. All around the edge of the tub's water here. So we started pulling foam out, water down there. And look what we find, guys. A manifold that's leaking. No clamps on the plumbing lines. Guys, you told me you're clamping all your plumbing lines. You know, there's no clamps on that, on that, on that manifold. And man, that's critical. If you're not clamping your joints, you're going to have leaks. Simple as that. And, and there's a whole manifold over there with not a single clamp on it that's leaking. Brand new, brand new tub out of your factory. And that's not all. Another leak here. So we got another leak on the, uh, on the filter housing where it attaches to the shell. And what it looks like is just carelessness. Uh, not enough silicone applied around the, uh, the gasket there when it was put in. And uh, every once in a while you just see a little drip coming out. And again, real easy to find the leak on these things because again, this foam doesn't harden up. So all you had to do is walk around, touch the foam. You found the wet foam, pulled it out, uh, you know, and, and reel it right away, you find those leaks. So again, you know, not a big deal to find the leaks. And that's always been my argument with the better quality foams. So we had a leak at the filter housing, which I showed you, and a leak on the manifold. So we flipped this thing over, uh, you know, just to figure out what we can do here. And there's the manifold that we're gonna have to uh, address. And again, no clamps on any of the joints. Now the funny thing is, uh, wherever you see, so in the front area here, they've clamped all the joints, and they've clamped the odd joint here and there. Uh, but man, so that manifold's not clamped, so I started looking at other manifolds. That manifold's not clamped. Uh, I started looking at other manifolds, uh, not clamped. So it's hit and miss. They seem to have thrown a couple clamps here and there, but they're not clamping all their joints, uh, which they told me they were doing. And these are smooth fittings. These are not even... Uh, the uh, the fittings with the with the barbs on them, so it's critical. They 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 got to be clamped, and they told me they were clamping them. Man, this thing just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Um, I, I don't even know how I can you know refer somebody to buy this tub because everything they've told me has been half true, half not true. Um, and man, it's just it's hit and miss. The quality control it seems to be totally non-existent, or they're just cutting corners. Uh, you know, there's another joint down there not clamped. Um, but again, anywhere you're going to see them right away, all clamps, clamps everywhere. Uh, but everywhere you're not going to see them, uh, you know, no clamps. So I don't know what the story is. Uh, all I know is that uh, this tub, brand spanking new, three leaks now, totally, all, all together. Shoddy workmanship, um, no clamps in half the joints. Man, it just blows my mind that they're putting out something like this and claiming it to be such a high standard. Anyway, that's what it is. Marquee Spas, brand new Vector 21. Three leaks, one fault, and a lot of carelessness on this tub. So, uh, man, I don't know what you guys are doing, but uh, if this is what you're putting out into the marketplace, I can't be referring this to customers. Chris Wheatley, Hot Tub University. Have a great day.